a lot of PS2 controllers have been having troubles with some of the buttons not working any longer. Namely, these buttons over here and this control pad, which is really just a set of buttons, will often fail on PS2 controls, even if they haven't been used for years and were working fine when they're put away in storage. Strangely, it might seem, the buttons in the center here, the select and start, still work fine in this scenario. What's going on? Well, let's look inside and see what's happening. So if you look inside a PS2 controller, one of the first things you'll see is a circuit board like this, but there aren't any buttons on it. <laughs> There's all the buttons. They're on top of this piece of plastic, clear plastic with these green traces. This one here is not the easiest to look at, so we'll look at this one over here. Now the three black things in the center are the traces that allow the controller to detect the start, select, and analog buttons. And these are the ones that continue to work in almost all controllers. How do they work? Let's explain that real quick. The basic idea is that if the controller applies electricity to these traces, like this one here, constantly. And then it measures from this trace here. By default, there's no electricity there because the electricity can't get across this clear gap. The rubber in the button is conductive enough to let electricity cross this space. Thus, the controller can detect electricity on this pin and it knows the button is pressed. This is a pretty old-fashioned method for measuring buttons. It's the same method that your television remote uses and it's very reliable. Unfortunately, this reliable method is not used for the rest of the buttons. And the reason is something that you probably didn't even realize your controller could do, and that is that it has pressure sensitivity for all the other buttons. That's right. The geometric buttons that used to be here and the arrow buttons are all pressure sensitive, and only a few games actually use this. In fact, the only one that I ever played was GTA 3, it was actually kind of a pain because you had to really mash the X button down in order to get good acceleration. So, unfortunately, this feature that was more of a bug, if you ask me, and was hardly ever utilized anyway, is why all these controllers are failing. So to understand what's going on, we need to compare the start buttons to the other buttons. Let's look at one here. This is one that I haven't modified, so it's the best example. So it works kind of like the other ones. This trace here is always electrified, and it's measuring the electricity on this trace here. The thing is that now it's not an all or nothing, it's actually a graded effect. This black pad is in fact conductive, always conductive, letting a small amount of electricity through. When you press the arrow button into it, it increases the amount of electricity it can get through, thus increasing the amount of voltage on this line. And the controller can detect that and determine how hard you're pressing. The problem is that now the range over which the controller is expecting to see voltage is quite limited. It needs it to be a specific amount. And as these plastic films get older, they tend to conduct electricity less well. They also tend to break or just kind of become particularly less conductive right at this transition between this trace here and this black region here. And if it loses enough conductivity, there's no longer enough electricity over here for the controller to think the button's being pressed. Can you fix it? For these sorts of setups that are like what you have in your remote control, there exists a technique which works pretty well. Here's an example of it, keypad fix. It's basically glue that has some conductive carbon in it. And it's good for fixing your old remotes like this. So that sort of technique would work well here. You would just smear some of this on here to repair the conductivity, and you would have a working controller. But now, if we try that same technique, and I have tried that same technique by smearing a little bit of the stuff here, and here, and here, we don't always get consistent good effects. And indeed, this button didn't used to work, and I fixed it. And I think I was able to fix this one, I can't remember anymore. But I wasn't able to get this one to work, or this one to work. And then over here, I tried the same strategy, and none of these were fixed. So the problem is that it's possible to get it to be too conductive. And then it thinks the buttons are always pressed, or somehow it screws up in its tiny little brain and just doesn't know what's happening anymore. Now, it's possible that understanding how this works, you might be able to do a better job than I did. Before I had read up on how all this works, 
I just dumped a big old blob of this conductive ink here. And lo and behold, it worked. And so I thought, great, let's do the same thing here. And so I kept on dumping my big old blobs, and for a while it was working okay. But the strategy is not foolproof, and eventually I found one that I couldn't recover by doing that. Then I tried to get a lot more surgical about it and tried to put a very small amount of this conductive ink here. But as you can see, it, even though I was much more careful and put a much smaller amount here, as it turns out, it did not fix the problem. So if you have only one button that's not working, maybe this would fix it. But if you got a lot of them that are broken, chances are it's going to be impossible to keep the connectivity precisely within the specs that Sony requires for these things to work. Now, in this day and age, no one sells these green films anymore. At least not official Sony ones. There are actually third-party ones, knockoffs, that are made. Um, not this particular one. This, uh, this one doesn't seem to be made anymore. But ones that are pretty similar are. And so if you take apart your controller, you might find that you have a film in it that is something you can order online and get it from China in a couple months. The problem is that the reliability of those apparently is not great. Uh, I've heard that sometimes they work not at all. Sometimes they work at first and then fail. Maybe sometimes they're great. Who knows? But uh, even these official Sony ones didn't last forever. 